to your health. Joining me today is Dr. Lorraine Mita, a functional and integrative medicine physician who practices anti-aging medicine, executive health, hormone replacement therapy, and weight management. She's the author of Vibrance for Life, How to Live Younger and Healthier. Dr. Mita is here today to discuss how to halt autoimmune disorders. Welcome, Dr. Mehta. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Joan. Dr. Mehta, we hear so much about autoimmune disorders these days. Can you explain to us what they are and how common they are? Well, the National Institutes of Health estimates that over 23.5 million people suffer from autoimmune disorders, and it, the amount of autoimmune disorders are rising. It's more common in women than in men, and most people have a genetic predisposition to it. People must have heard of these disorders. The most common ones are Hashimoto's thyroiditis, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, multiple sclerosis, and even celiac. There are hundreds of these disorders. And if you have one, you're more likely to have another one. So I'm sure you and your listeners know somebody that's suffering from any one of these disorders, and they don't even know what to do about it. So doctor, you just said that most people have a genetic predisposition to these disorders. Does that mean that everyone who has this will develop it? Not necessarily. You know, your genes need to be turned on and they can also be turned off. So think of your genes as a loaded gun. It's not gonna do any harm unless you pull the trigger. A triggering event for autoimmune disorders, if you happen to have the genetic predisposition, are things like infection and that are compounded by toxins and stress. Almost every one of my patients, if I search back to what happened before you developed this disorder, it's usually a major stressor or infection. See, it's the infection that pulls the trigger and turns the immune system on. And it's through a process called molecular mimicry. It's your immune system mistakes the infection or the toxin for your thyroid gland or your gut or whatever area the autoimmune disorder attacks. So the, the part that it attacks will depend upon your genes and the type of infection or toxin. So, for example, people with celiac disease usually have a gene called the HLA-DQA1 and HLA-DQB1. So you can have the genes, but if you're not exposed to gluten or you don't develop an infection that triggers the autoimmune response, you may never get celiac disease. You need to activate the immune system. And the same is true of all the other autoimmune disorders. When the immune system gets activated in an inappropriate way, it causes the immune system to attack your body, and that inflammation damages the organs and the tissues, and it leads to the signs and symptoms of whichever disease it is. So, for example, rheumatoid arthritis, it would be your joints, lupus, it could be your eyes, your kidneys, your skin, and there are certain bacteria that are associated with autoimmune disorders. For example, gingivitis. You know, common things of bleeding gums is associated with rheumatoid arthritis, and so is a common urinary tract infection from a disorder, a bacteria called Proteus. Epstein-Barr is associated with rheumatoid arthritis, as well as many other autoimmune disorders like lupus, celiac, type 2 diabetes, multiple sclerosis, and inflammatory bowel disease. So understanding that taking care of infections early on, managing your stress, and keeping the immune system in check is going to be critical for preventing or managing the autoimmune response. So doctor, what can a person do to avoid or manage autoimmune issues? What if we've already had an infection that we didn't know about? Can we undo whatever damage may have been done? I actually see a lot of people stabilize or reverse the some of the processes you know, if you develop an autoimmune disease, you can never use the word cure, but it, it's something you will always have. You will always have that tendency so that I have patients that have been managing for years. You can manage it. You can keep the immune response at bay, but you have to understand you're much more vulnerable if you get an infection or if you're under a lot of stress or you're exposed to toxin because, you know, studies show that about 30% of all autoimmune disease are genetic, 
and the rest, 70%, are due to environmental factors such as toxic chemicals, your diet, your, your gut microbiome, the, you know, whether you have good or bad bugs in your gut and different types of infections. So that, for example, if you know you have the gene for celiac disease, if you avoid gluten, you're not going to trigger the immune response. However, if you're sensitive to one food, you're often sensitive to another food. So food sensitivities are a really important factor because something like dairy is extremely similar in structure to wheat. So if you avoid wheat and you may be reacting to dairy and not avoiding dairy, you're kicking up the immune response. So what I usually recommend to my patients is doing an elimination diet. You eliminate the common food that cause sensitivities, and then you reintroduce them to see if your symptoms change. Now there are better tests. What people don't realize is they say, oh, I've been tested for gluten, but it only tests two antibodies. Well, you know, wheat and gluten has probably 27. So there are new tests that go deeper and test more, and we do that in our office. Um, Toxins are another thing that can cause what, what we described before as molecular mimicry. It looks like your tissues. It looks like the infection. These toxins can trigger the immune response. Just think about it. You know, when we put on lotions and hairsprays and uh, you know, nail polish and clean our house, we're exposed to over 200 chemicals per day. And even our furniture, our clothes, our carpeting, outgasses different types of chemicals. So you can never really get away from it, but you can decrease the toxic burden. And then the last but not least is managing your stress because stress predisposes you to infections that trigger and perpetuate this immune response. So managing stress, deep breathing, prayer, meditation, getting quieting your mind, reframing is very, very important to managing the immune response. And there's so much more that can be offered to people who already have an autoimmune disorder and don't want it to progress. You know, as a functional medicine doctor, there's so much more that you can offer people to manage the immune response because many of my patients live very happy, healthy, carefree lives, and they don't need to rely on medication because they're willing to change their habits and manage the disorder. And you know, doctor, if you think about it, Having some control over approximately 70% gives us a lot of power. And could you just remind our listeners, what are those foods that you usually recommend we eliminate? Just for two weeks, I have people eliminate alcohol, artificial sweeteners, caffeine, corn, dairy, eggs, peanuts, sugar, soy, wheat, and anything with gluten. And usually it takes about two weeks before you start, a week you start feeling better and when you add the foods back in after two weeks, if you experience a symptom, and there's a symptom questionnaire I give my patients, that means your immune response has been kicked up, and that's a food to avoid, and sometimes you can heal from it, but this is something that should be monitored and addressed. Dr. Mita, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing this information. As you said, Having some control over about 70% of whether or not these autoimmune disorders occur gives us a lot of power. So like you said, making some lifestyle changes can make a big difference in how we live our life. So if you would like to get more information about Dr. Maida and her work, you can visit her website, howtoliveyounger.com. And as always, to hear more from Dr. Maida, you can visit our website, cyacyl.com slash Lorraine.